Welcome to the Angel Rewatch, a spoiler-free retrospective podcast on Angel. I'm William. And I'm Derek, and this is a podcast for Dead End, originally airing April 24th, 2001, written by David Greenwald. Lindsay goes through his morning routine, showing how he manages with only one hand. He also wakes a big chunk of time staring at his car longingly in his closet. Why he doesn't move it to somewhere else less visible is a mystery, but not the only questionable decision in this episode. Across town, we see a regular waspish family getting ready for their day, too. Everything is happy and normal until the dad stabs himself in the eye with a knife. Cordelia sees the vision and thrashes away on the Hyperion. She collapses, whimpering into Angel's arms. Wesley, Angel, and Gunn then split up, looking for the victim's family while Cordelia suffers alone. The visions are beginning to take a real physical and emotional toll. At Wolfram Heart, there's a real evaluation coming for Lila and Lindsay's position. Lila is freaking out because, due to unexplainable reasons, Lindsay is still everyone's golden boy. So much so that they send him to a doctor's appointment to get his hand replaced. Lindsay goes through his surgery, which he is apparently semi-conscious for, and the demon shaman blesses his hand, you know, the usual thing. His next morning routine is much more happy, and he even gets to play guitar. Angel Investigations, though, is still struggling to find anything out about Cordelia's ish. Angel helps Cordelia remember the details, and she uncovers the name of the kid's school, and they finally have up the lead. Lila and Lindsay are meeting with a client, and Lindsay excels in the meeting, until it's revealed that his hand has been running killed over and over again on a new legal pad. He rushes out of the meeting, leaving Lila alone, but everyone is still so impressed with him. Angel Investigations discovers that the family has disappeared without a trace. They realize that someone or something has gotten rid of them, but they have no hint of who or what. So they are back at square one. They have no choice but to go to Caritas. At Caritas, they are surprised to see Lindsay sing. It is a really good performance, but it ends being a huge ego stroke for Christian Kane as everyone marvels over Lindsay's voice. Cordelia is even okay with the whole being evil thing because the singing voice is just so sexy. So, anyway, the host tells Lindsay the only way to solve his problem of an evil hand is to work with Angel. Lindsay throws the first of his many unconvincing tantrums, and storms out. Gum wants to follow him, but Angel is being just petty and uses the glass lens he was holding, which apparently was sweaty as hell because there's very good fingerprints on it. And here we reach our detective portion of the episode, where Lindsay skulks around Wolfman Hart. He breaks into poor man Holland's office and looks up the hospital where he got his hand replaced. He also sees Lila working overtime, but only we see that Lila has a handgun in her hand purse. Angel doesn't want Boris with all that boring skulking stuff, and he just hires a private eye to get to find out everything they need to. But this is not the first time I've asked how exactly how much money Angel has at his disposal. The end result is Lindsay and Angel both end up confronting a crooked parole officer who works with Wolf and Hart. I'll spell you all of Lindsay's tantrums, but he grudgingly works with Angel. They tie the parole officer back in the back of Angel's trunk, and he leads them to the building where he took all his charges for Wolfram Hart. In the hidden basement, Wolfram Hart has set up an organ smuggling ring. They keep the old people alive magically while they harvest their organs. Lindsay knows the man that, he, that his hand came from. Weakly but alert, the man tells Lindsay to kill him. Lindsay unhooks his machine, and the man dies, while Angel saves the people who are waiting to be harvested. Angel blows out the building as Lindsay and the other victims succeed. The next day, there's, it's the reevaluation meeting. This is where every sense of logic and intelligence gets thrown out the window. Apparently, Wolf and Hart were going to get rid of Lila, because, I don't know, they also think Lindsay's great singing voice excuses every terrible thing he's done. So, just before they're about to swing the axe down on Lila, Lindsay interrupts. He freaks out, ranting about his evil hand and how he really is in control of his actions. Going out in a blaze of psychotic eye quit glory, he leaves Wolfram and Hart, telling them that Lyle is the one that they should promote. And Wolfram and Hart just, you know, let him go, because why not? Anyway, so Lindsay loads up all his worldly possessions in the back of his beat up pickup truck, where Angel is waiting for him. Before Lindsay goes, he tells Angel the only way to beat Wolfram and Hart is to not play their game, make them play your own. Angel thanks him for the advice and tells him to watch out for cops. As long as he pulls away, his rear bumper is revealed. Angel has put a cop sucks sign on the back of his truck. And that's the end of the episode. Kate's gone, and now Lindsay's gone? What is happening? You you think I'd be happy, but... 
I hate this a lot. You had to, you had to endure. I I'm not. I'm honestly not even happy that he's gone. Just how much I hate this episode. <laughs> it was really like like the writers really want and the the people directing the episode just really wanted L- Lindsay to have this just episode that was all focused around him and like really like everyone's marveling at him <laughs> good job and we have the whole singing scene like they really just were like yeah let's let him go out in his blaze of glory it was just kind of boring when it was focused on him okay so it's not going to come as a surprise to many people <laughs> <laughs> How much I hate Lindsay. But that's not why. I mean, Lindsay being in this so much is probably the least of this episode's problems for me. I think the whole thing is an illogical mess, and I think it all rests on the end because nothing, nothing about Lindsay's rants and the fallout and all that makes any, any sense to me. It just, I don't want to talk about it right now. I think. Because if we do, that's all, I'm, that's all I'm going to focus on. So I think we can leave it and talk about the other things in the episode. But there, I feel like a lot of it does, a lot of it does ride on the end, and the end I think is just such a mess. The yeah okay, well I guess we'll the logical up. problems of the end. I do think that actually the one time, well I enjoy his singing voice. I don't enjoy. It anything around that scene and the reactions to it. But I, he does have a very nice singing voice. But the other, I do enjoy, he's, he's very, he's, the actor is really enjoying himself in the, his, I quit speech and that's kind of infectious. But then everything, again, everything surrounding it is just makes no sense. Right. He actually gets to kind of let loose, which uh, seems like he, he seems to be taking a lot of enjoyment out of just, Getting to go over the top, like uh, it, this isn't the first time we've seen oh, but, Christian Cage oh, yeah, cause play over such the top. He, understated a character. He seems to really enjoy when he gets those moments. Uh, no, so they did want to comment on in the the singing uh, scene. No, I don't want to talk about when, that. Yet. Well, okay, fine. Here's what I want to talk about. I just want to talk about why I have such problems with Lindsay. And it's not just that his personality is very grating to me, because that's that's very petty, and it's it's not just that I don't like him as a character, because likability and watchability are not the same thing. Right. There's still some characters that you love to hate. Well, there's char- I don't think he's going for I love to hate either. Or, or there's characters that are morally gray that are interesting, so you I, actually enjoy seeing their stories. I think what I would classify Lindsay as, as a bratty... <laughs> I feel like he is a he emotionally is about 10 to 20 years younger than he actually is. <laughs> um, I would classify him as a bratty teenager, and it's hard to make that character work, to be honest, but you can make them sympathetic enough that they seem like an actual person. I, they have defined Lindsay, but I never, they never made him seem like a real person because he has a, one of, he doesn't have many modes of interacting. Most of them are just whiny and tantrumy, and I deserve these things because I have decided I deserve them. He's entitled. Right. So when, like, it comes very clear in this episode when Angel and Lindsay are both acting very petty with each other. Sure. And on Angel's side, that's actually pretty entertaining because that's contrasted against everything else that Angel has done. So it's not right. that Angel is petty. It's that he's petty and he can also lock a bunch of lawyers in a basement to their death. That's the same guy. That's why that's funny. Lindsay is just petty and acting like a child, even though he's like 25 to 30 years old. And he's like stomping his, he is literally stomping his feet in one scene. And it's not, he's just so bratty. 
and it's not like it's not like there's anything to latch on with him. He's just irritating and in your face and I I had a poor childhood so that means I can do whatever I want because my childhood sucked and that means I am entitled to whatever I want because I'm Lindsay right no I I, I, I he agree has the emotional maturity of a 14 year old if you look at everything that he does it, especially in like more recent episodes oh, well, with, I think I with like I think they've probably decided in more recent episodes that he's in a case of arrested development where really deep down he's just that southern boy who came to the city all (laughs) wide-eyed. But, I mean, even if we're talking about how he treated Darla or how he – his That whole situation Mm -hmm. and uh, being jealous. Like, he does act like a teenager. He's jealous. I want to hear the details. I want to hear you talk about it. You know, he's he's a little – He's a little whiny baby, but yes, I, 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 it, it, in this episode, so like it works with Angel. Yeah, like yeah, there's the like we just came off of Angel being the super dark and all this mm. really dark things he's done, and and to see him goofy and petty is is just like another facet of his character. Yes, but like our information of Lindsay is like there's there's nothing there's no depth. No, he's just he's just kind of this jerk lawyer and then all the sympathy that they drum up is really manufactured like the the whole hand thing i know it was the season finale but it's just like <laughs> it's like season one like there's no there's no i don't feel any sympathy for his hand being gone no i don't like yeah you got what you deserved and they try and drum it up like this whole episode and the you know the longing shot at the guitar oh, why man. has don't he moved it don't, don't you just feel the heartstrings no. there? Uh. No, the thing is that Lindsay is, has been clearly defined. He hasn't been clearly developed at all. So, sure. I mean, I respect the show recognizes that they can't. I don't know why he left the show. I don't. I could say it's probably to pers- pursue his singing career, but I don't know that. I'm just being a jerk. But. It seems like they decide with Kate and Lindsay. They decide these characters aren't working, so I respect that they got rid of them or wrote them off the show. Sure, that's, that's fine. It's interesting that they did them so close together. Well, like they're just cleaning house. I know, but if you were going to clean house, I mean, you could have done it earlier i guess i mean it's been interesting this season like no i think as they... much as i hate him i think he served a purpose with darla i think having Lindsay there gave a, Lindsay's feelings for darla and that relationship didn't really tell us a whole lot about Lindsay. i think it told us more about darla and it gave us a reason to keep going back to wolfer and hart because he was he was always like obsessed with her, and it gave us a reason to be at those offices. That is true. It, it definitely gave a tie there, uh, and it's sad because there was like a lot of interesting stories that like were starting to like what is going on with this character, like. But they, they they could never. It was always surface level. It's always been surf, yeah, surface surface level the with this character, and then really. exactly so. And I, even when there was the hint of something there, it's like, uh, no, he's just kind of a dick. <laughs> yeah, when that one episode in reunion, when he's, well, they kind of follow up on the reunion thing, where it seems that he's just decided in this episode that he's not going to play. He's figured out that Wilfred Hart is playing a game, and he doesn't want to play that game anymore. Lila is still very much invo- invested in the game, right? So she he has, he does have a. <laughs> clear shark he just never becomes much of a character and i would i really there has to be someone out there who likes him and i would because there's been consensus between us and everyone regular commerce and feedback that we don't like him but i would like to find someone who does and explain to me why (laughs) well i'm sure there is someone out there that the 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 grayish story or the 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 person who got in with good intentions and kind of got corrupted I, like that doesn't sound terrible like no, if you it look doesn't. on it at, at face value mm-hmm. so there's got to be someone that that hit with okay 
that's I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I'm also the other thing is I feel that his his southern roots background is not really a character. It's a character trait more than anything else, which again just it's, he's he's completely surface and there's nothing going on deeper that I feel connected to. And right. I don't know like, if that's a writing and I don't know if it's a performance that I never believe. He just seems to ping. He ricochets all over, like he's really petty and tantrumy, and then he's like, I'm a cool lawyer, and then I'm like, I hate Angel. Yeah, all of his, like, but, defining characteristics are all window dressing. Yeah. I mean, he could have, like, an eye patch and a parrot. It wouldn't do anything for the character. Like, <laughs> his cowboy boots, you know what I mean? It, it, it adds nothing not totally. Like, there's no history. It, it's, just, it, it's a very, actually, bad moment when Angel tells him to pick a genre, because I don't think he really has one. Just I, like, Okay, so, what, talking about... Oh, wait, scenes, let's talk about it now, because yeah. it is terrible. And okay. <laughs> just, what is happening? Okay, so we're going to get into my angry mode, because I think I'm just going to go full stream ahead. <laughs> what is happening in that scene with Cordelia? <laughs> well, they keep like dissolve fading into her face of, well, of wonder. <laughs> she's so just she's so happy by wow, his his singing has touched me. It, it, like he does. Okay, it's, I, a, I, it's, it's, it's a great performance. It right? is. He but is very it, they good. They screech the episode to a halt. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, I love Angel in the scene. Like. His reaction. Well, like, everyone's the like, only one that's wow. making sense because everyone else is like, "Oh my god!" He I just mean, put he's... his heart out on that stage. <laughs> he I mean, is just an open book, and we just read him. No, he had a very good performance with a very generic, generic lyrics. I'll be honest, not the deepest. Rate fire he falling from the picture. sky. But and everyone freaks out like it's the greatest thing they've ever heard, which honestly okay. is nothing better <laughs> than what the host does on a daily basis. Sure, and that's fine. In terms but, of quality of performance, okay. But it's supposed to be surprising because we know nothing about Lindsay. Like, okay, sure. <laughs> It this never. actually gives him but it, a, a defining trait. Like it, this, kind of gives him a, a sense of history, okay. even though sure. it's his like exit. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not that upset with the fact that they're like surprised. It is the Cordelia of the thing where she is so impressed with him in a way that mi- connects nothing to what the rest of her story in this episode. Right, it like makes zero Lindsay sense. heals her of all pain. He is like Jesus with his voice in that <laughs> for her, and she and talking about the fading, it's she's I I don't know how to describe it cleanly, but <laughs> she is so sexually. It looks like she's so sexually attracted to him in that moment, and she literally says. That I know you're even all, but like, damn girl, that touched me. <laughs> yeah, that's like, not literally what she says, but you, you know. Yeah, it, it's so. There's no, it, no matter how good his singing voice, there is no universe where Cordelia, Cordelia especially, should excuse Lindsay for everything he's done, especially and his when she would have taken yeah. Angel back. Right, and her her reaction to like. Apparently, well, that's, not, that's not Cordelia. No, like that's not. just not Cordelia. She would be like, "Wow, that was really." Well, she would say what was on her mind, but she, and she'd be like, "Wow, that's really good." But then she would like blurt out inappropriate things about how he's responsible for evil things. Like I, it just makes zero sense. It, it's so, yeah, like you said, like out of place for Cordelia in the episode. She's there's a lot of interesting things going on with Cordelia, but this she instantly goes out of what's going on in the actual episode just to stop and go, wow, that was really good <laughs> to have uh, with this joke or ego boost for Christian Kane. I'm not sure what I'm not sure. It's a, jo- it's a jokey scene, but it's also, it, they are so into his singing voice that I don't, 
it's distracting. I, I think it's, I mean, it's trying to give Christian Kane a moment. Well, they give him plenty of moments. Give him his applause. Give him his, his kind of like, you can like sing yourself out. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, something I did really like, so so they, they're they doing the pan thing, and it's, it's all music video-ish, right? And, and Christian Kane's getting really into the performance, but they're like, pan to the demons, <laughs> and there's like something so funny about, about seeing <laughs> about seeing like these evil demons. Well, you we don't know if they're evil, but they look really evil looking, really menacing, and they're like really smiling and kind of like bobbing their head. It's really I, I found it really funny to me. Well, I I really like Angel. I mean, I love Angel's petty interactions with Lindsay the entire episode. I just love right. how he doesn't. He doesn't want to talk to him. He doesn't want to be around him. He just, every chance he gets, he gets. To, he likes to pick on him. Like, oh, I, I, I mean, half of it. If I ignore just Lindsay literally stomping his foot and acting like a two-year-old, it's my lead. It's my lead. But then you have that with Angel calling him on it <laughs> and doing it while he's choking someone out. And that's just kind of the perfect angel moment that he's choking out this dude, but he's also being just a three-year-old, a, another three-year-old picking on Lindsay for being a three-year-old. Like he's right. so petty and he's also really menacing <laughs> and choking a guy. And he doesn't really it's... care and <laughs> about the guy that's almost sort of dying in his arms. It's, you can tell that the actors are really enjoying themselves yes. getting to, to to go at each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they really do. Every time they have a scene together, this episode, they they really do seem to be having a lot of fun with each other. And, and I, you know, I even enjoy some of of the Lindsay moments when he gets to kind of retort Angel when he, when he's not throwing the temper tantrum. You know, he gets some nice digs in, like whenever Angel like. Oh, oh! Why would I kill you? I, you know, I can live off you for a month, and then he was like, "You really, you're really gross." You know that, like, just some that nice little banter mm-hmm. that they give him. But, but throughout the episode, like, they give Angel the good lines, and then Lindsay throws just little fits like a two year old. Mm-hmm. So it makes Angel look a lot more enjoyable, and just Lindsay even less likable than he already was. Yes. Okay, let's go back to the Cordelia thing, which is it's pretty brief. But it's my favorite part of the episode, which is not sure. saying a whole lot. But I also really do like the Cordelia storyline because she's not. We've talked about before how we're not. We haven't been totally convinced by her vision acting before because she's very histrionic and like screaming and in so much pain, and it's it's too much for me to actually feel that she's in pain or to relate to that pain. Right. But in this episode, she does a really really good job of doing quiet side of chronic pain and how it's really taking a toll on her. And there's just moments where she kind of just snaps. And then when you're in like chronic pain like that, you just, you're quiet and then you'd like snap and you're really irritated at like everything. And she does a really good job with that. The whole episode. This was definitely her best performance with with the vision Mm -hmm. scenes and and where where the story is going because that like it's lasting so long throughout this episode and the fact that all the characters are commenting on it you know i find that really interesting um and yeah there's something there was something about how quiet or underplayed she could do it like it made it more believable more relatable and made it more impactful and it really you really believed that she was going through this kind of pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really like the the vision it itself. Uh, was really it caught me off guard. Um, I mean, I, I I remember the the knife was going to go in the eye, but I did it. Still, it still no. I was can't. Like, I can't. Wa- I couldn't watch it. I have a weird thing about eyes, and <laughs> I can't watch. I I can't. I couldn't watch it, even though they don't uh, show it. Just before, well, when he picks up the knife, and I, and then I guess I kind of remember that it goes into his eye. But when they keep going back, I, oh, no, I can't. They, uh, they end up, they do end up showing the guy's ni- uh, eye. I did later again. In the episode. I, I closed my eyes. I was like <laughs> a little baby. But uh, 
it, it was really shocking. And, and it's so out of place because we went from Lindsay and then it, all of a sudden it's like, honey, I'm home. And you're like, what's going on? And all of a sudden it's like, oh, God. Well, and it Things are so really happy at these people, people we've never met before. I knew something terrible was about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because that's just the way it is. And I, I like how it cuts back to Cordelia and, uh, you know, Angel in, instantly, like she's just flailing around because mm. of the eyeball stabbing. Uh, and Angel, you know, is grabbing her and, you know, he's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she literally is in so much pain that she can't answer. So she's just sobbing in his arms. Yeah. There's something really affecting about that. And, it, you know, as it goes into the title sequence, yeah. uh, it's sad that we have to have the Lindsay storyline. But I loved I, every... <laughs> chance they got to go back to Cordelia. I think Cordelia's story is in this episode the perfect amount. Especially since they're they're really kind of introduced... I mean, they introduced it with Wesley saying that the visions are really taking their toll. But this is the first time we're actually seeing it. And I don't... It could be a whole episode about that, but I think that's too much to load onto us right at the beginning. I sure. think it's it's... It's good that it's in the background, and there's not a whole lot they can dramatize about it, really. Because it's just everyone being concerned about her, which they do a really good job of, of, but you can't really make that into action. It's just everyone feels really sorry for her because she's in so much pain, and they're trying to figure out what to do to stop it. Like, right. And I, if it's I, any other story but Lindsay, <laughs> it's, a, it's fine. But I think it's in its brief but it's any more probably would lose its effectiveness a little bit. Right. It's, it's very effective by how like short, but sweet. Uh, well, it's not um, really sweet. It's just like terror. It's actually kind of, like, terrifying. It's, it's kind of terrifying. Right. Uh, I, I found like it, there's something so interesting about, you know, you have gun Wesley and angel, these three guys and, they they want to help her so badly, but they have no idea how to. And especially Gun and Angel, who solve problems by punching things, right? And it, and the, I think what well, we we haven't really talked about. I do like that Wesley <laughs> just gives, which I mean, it's a funny moment that he just assigns Angel to do it. But I think that's also the smartest person to assign to that task because I think Wesley they, is pretty pretty savvy at the fact that Angel and Cordelia have a special relationship. Right. And I don't I don't believe Wesley would be tactful enough to Oh no, I think and I think Wesley understand Wesley has shown real maturity in dealing with the two of them and understanding them and what they what their relationship is and how to deal with it. Right. Like he was super mature last Last week, and I know it's very jokey and seems kind of immature because of how he's like, "But hey, you're the boss," and he's like, "Yes," and I'm ordering you to do it. I don't, I, but I don't think it's I don't think that's immature. I think it comes up. It's a joke, but I also think that it's a real smart move on Wesley's part. Right, it's a joke. It comes off a little more immature than it actually is because of how they keep panning to Gun and Wesley, kind of being like, <laughs> like kind of like little kids. Uh, oh, I was just focused on Angel and Cordelia. I didn't care. There's other people in that scene. <laughs> well, Angel keeps like looking back at the guys as they're kind of like, uh, you know, uh, like asking mommy if we could get away with something. But uh, what I something I also really like uh, is is how much you know they want to help Cordelia, but at the same time they're so stuck, like they can't do it themselves. They've kind of exhausted a lot of resources, and they need Cordelia's help. Mm-hmm. Like there, there's there's such a need for Cordelia, and I know she's only in it for for very little, but they they really do show a lot of strength to her character in this episode, uh, uh, especially. Do you want to talk about Cordelia saying "I love you" and then Angel having his dorky smile? Other sure, than it's perfect. <laughs> it's great. It's, I love. It. I mean, we've talked about before that Angel smiling is very effective, and it's just. I really do the sweetness in their relationship that he just gets everything and doesn't know what to do, but then that works for her. And I just, I really like the sweetness of all four of them really caring about each other in this episode. Okay. Are we done with the positives? Cause let's just get into the absolute 
nonsense that is the end. <laughs> well, okay, but can, okay, I'm just going to talk about since we're still on Cordelia. I want to talk about the very end with Cordelia when she's saying, "Yeah, the visions are taking a toll," and then her just say, "But you know, that's the job." I know okay, it's just, I it kind of sets up that. Yes, it, it, it sets up you know this background story or or, or that they, that they are not done with it, right? Well, but, I also like that when she first got the visions, she wanted to get rid of them. And in this, even just because they were, like, inconvenient to her in her, in her journey to stardom. But this, this episode, it never even comes up. It never even consider, it's never even considered that she should try to get rid of them. Right. Which I think is a nice moment of growth. Yeah, and it, it yeah, like I said, it was it just showed so much strength behind her. Like just the fact that she's able to just you know, like, but you know, that's I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing this because it's it's worth doing. You know what I mean? Okay. Like she gets to say a lot by just even the, but it's just kind of part of the job. You know, she, even though it's kind of a blow off kind of answer, but the fact that she kind of owns like not owns up to it, but actually shares with the group and expresses some some fear like she seems like throughout the episode like she really wants to not come across as so damaged mm-hmm. and the fact that everyone's kind of walking on eggshells around her is really bothering her yeah she doesn't uh, want to be seen as weak i think is what yeah what her why she's acting the way she is around them and the, there's like real strength by her Telling her, tell, telling them that, you know, yes, this is this is affecting me, but I'm going to keep going on. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I, I really love. But you want to just hand the reins over to me and just yeah, I'll, let's let's do okay. it. Okay. So we go into the basement. I'm fine. We're good. Okay. So Lindsay is just the whole episode. I'm just expecting that there's going to be a twist from Wolf and Heart. Like Wolf and Heart half to know that they've given Lindsay an evil hand. Like, okay, so maybe the thing is that they gave... They, they're they going to make Lila think that they're, you know, we're going with Lindsay. But really, they give him an evil hand, so he'll do what he does, which is to work with Angel, and mess up one of their, like, side businesses. Which is what he does. But then we get to the meeting, and poor man's hand says, okay, even though you have had outbursts at meetings about Angel and how you clearly want to kill him, even though we've made that clear that, that that's just not on the agenda, um, you've been harboring one of our enemies in your apartment for weeks, months maybe, when he had Darla, and you knew about her, and you let her get into the um, meeting where she, we were going to bring a senior partner, which is like a really big deal, but whatever. We're fine with it, because at some meetings, you're really good at talking to people. Even though you're complete liability everywhere else, outside of the business, sometimes in meetings, you say good stuff. So, we're going to get rid of Lila, who's messed up less than you, is a very good worker, maybe is a little less eloquent at times, but still competent enough, and we're going to go with you, who's clearly not into this job and anyway but we're gonna go with you and oh oh but then Lindsay freaks out and they let him go why Wolfman Hart seem so moronic in this episode there is no sense to giving Lindsay they have to know that the hand is evil even they have to know there's a problem because that guy dies so they give Lindsay the hand why? I mean, because they want to reward him, I guess. There's, like, no ulterior motive. They're just so into Lindsay at this point, I, for whatever reason. Could you explain this to me? Because I, I, I have no idea. Why? Okay, so, why? Explain to me why Lindsay gets the job over Lila. Okay, well... Besides, he says a couple good things. Why would you keep this guy on the payroll? Because he is a complete liability in everything else. All right. So here, here's me trying to sweep some things under the rug. Okay. So I'm not sh- exactly sure how much Wolfman Hart is familiar 
or knows about uh, Lindsay and Darla's interactions after mm. she gets like that. They've never we've never seen Wolfram and Hart like confront Lindsay about his involvement with her. Uh, basically, Six Flags lawyer guy, but they, is not as they he should know as that. Holland. No, he's terrible. He is a terrible Han replacement in every conceivable way. Because Han would, well, Han does do this in um, is it Blind Date, the episode with the Blind Assassin. Yeah. Okay. So Han does basically the same thing, where he has he's like, all right, you can go, Lindsay. You're and Lindsay works with Angel, and they screw up one of Wolverine Hart's side projects. And then they bring Lindsay back, and it kind of makes sense because he's like, all right, I forget what Holland says, but we were okay with that one. This one makes no sense, especially because Lindsay burns every bridge, waves a gun, shoots around him, and they still like, all right, well, you can leave L.A. Like, this isn't going to blow up in our face at all. Clearly, this guy who knows so much about us. Um, hates us, but we're just gonna let him go. Like we, I mean, we killed that whole that whole family because we just gave that guy a bad eye, and he killed, he stabbed himself. So then we killed his whole family because we didn't want that secret to get out. But you know, Lindsay, you can go back to Oklahoma because you know you sing really good, and we don't want to deprive the world. Even though we're evil, we don't want to deprive the world of your country music stardom. <laughs> I, I I don't have a great answer for you, like. If, if it no was if, if, it if Holland was still there, right? Like you would but, think that there, that that the the twist of the hand, like that there there would be some sort of other manipulation going on. There's there. no other manipulation. They just but they just like here have a hand. <laughs> is it is it is it is it a success rate thing? Is it, is the reason why it, it doesn't work? Is it like eight out of ten of these surgeries yeah, works because that, because there's a lot of when they go to the basement and we see all the the bodies right like they've always obviously harvested a lot of organs mm -hmm. and i don't think that like there are side effects for a bunch of people otherwise they would stop doing it right i, I, don't, would, I mean i, don't I mean really know. they maybe they don't care but there's never really it's like i mean it's, i guess it's explained why Lindsay's hand is saying kill because the guy wants to die. Right. Why does... So the guy in the beginning gets an eye replaced. Why does he stab himself? Because the eye should be the only thing that's in control if we're going by the weird magic sci made up magic science. Because uh, Lindsay doesn't really have control of that hand. Right. And it's like it's not like other parts of his body the, the hand gets in control of. I, I don't know. No, the eye. Okay, so that's optic nerve connected to the the brain. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, it's, I it's went just, that down. It's supposed to be the too, but no, they didn't explain it. They didn't explain it. It's just supposed to be the same thing that the person was trying to kill themselves because they're they're in pain. They're they're very much alive. Like there is something really disturbing about the the organ harvesting scene. No, I do think it's, like, no, it's a good. The basement is barring from a lot of sci-fi horror tropes and just a look, but it is a very it's a very effective visual that I remembered even before they went into the basement. I remembered, oh, this is that episode where they go in there. Okay. Yeah, like, but you have still nothing nothing in that freak out makes the least bit of sense. Wolfram Hart look like complete idiots and that is a terrible thing to do when their whole the, their whole thing as villains is that they're hyper intelligent and they're one step of head. So, but in this, they're just complete utter morons. There's yeah, and I Letting have to tie go, into. I mean, okay, for whatever reason, they decide that they're going to go with Lindsay. Fine, even though when we, I mean, it made sense when they hired when they when they gave both of them the job. It was a clever way that they both listed both of their mistakes. and But you do remember that when they listed their mistakes. That's what I was getting to. Lindsay had <laughs> a laundry list that was like ten times long, and Lila just messed up like two things. Lila, you have Lindsay. been unproductive about the Bethany Chalk, and you and didn't you come to your meeting at 1030 or something. You didn't Whatever. give enough for the Christmas pool. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why we're going to separate you, even though you're clearly better at this. Just from I know. what we've seen. 
they try and like give Lindsay more points in this episode with the uh, you know he's on top of the ball he knows the time of the meeting he's got a good idea for the the yeah, corporate but then, people, there's but... other moments where Lindsay just doesn't care about any of this right he just he really seems to just he just likes messing with Lila and that's the only time that he seems to fix out when he gets to show her up and it's working it is working that she seem she ends up being obviously flustered, visibly flustered by him. So it's working in that sense. But every like the amount of good things we've seen him do, and he has screwed up almost every project he's been on. But they and they don't they don't say like in exact words that I mean they kind of do, because poor man Solomon's like, yes you are the guy, Lindsay. Why? But they don't, they don't, we never get the full thing of that scene where they offer him the job and they're going to kill Lila. I mean, it's implied that's what's going to happen. So it might, the whole, the way that that whole scene could have worked, if he had, if he has the big long rant and they said, well, we're going to fire him anyway, but then they should have killed him and they should have killed him anyway, because there's no reason to let that guy live. Yeah, the fact that he's able to walk out of there. He's able to walk out of there and it also, it will go to his apartment and get his stuff and just leave. It makes Wolfram and Hart appear weak. I know they want to give, like, I I have to assume, maybe I'm reading too much into this, but I have to assume that Christian Kane was not happy with the story they were telling, or telling with his character, and that he wanted to have his moment, his episode to go out on, like, let, let me have, not his hero moment, because he's not I mean, a hero. it's clearly like an acting set piece when he freaks out. Right, like, he gets... He gets to go back to Charlie multiple times. He's just Charlie. having the time of his life in that scene. And that's right. fine, but the whole time I'm thinking none of what is occurring here makes a l- tiniest bit of sense. Right, it's it's kind of in... It is the, the most over top he, over the top he's been, right? But it, it was still kind of enjoyable uh, in some regards... Uh, than other times he's gone way over the top. No, but I would agree it, it, with that. Like, there, there's something infectious about how happy he is in the moment. Like, the actor is in in the I moment. I mean, it is in a glorious I quit speech. <laughs> right. The but, thing is, he should have a bullet in his brain once right, he's it done. Makes, it makes Wolfram and Hart appear really, really weak. Like, I know that he gets the guard's gun and shoots him in the foot. Like, hey, I have this gun yeah, and I'm going to walk they, out of here. But they recently have more than one guard. Right. Like, they, he shouldn't be able to... They, they, they have armies of blind assassins or other assassins. They have hitmen and He just gets and, to leave the building unopposed. Just, eh, okay, whatever, that's fine, you can leave. And, and the... You know, poor man's Holland, Six Flags lawyer, says nothing. He just kind of sits there. <laughs> he gets shot around, doesn't react, and is just kind of like... Well, he looks okay. mildly inconvenienced when the bullets are flying around him. <laughs> I really do like the shot of his family, and his, he's dressed his son exactly like him. <laughs> That's like the one... That is probably the only moment I've enjoyed from him as a character. I, 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 haven't, I didn't catch it. Yeah, when That's Lindsay... It. Oh, and Lindsay breaks into his office. He has to know. Like, they have extensive security. Lindsay breaks in, and he's just able to, I don't know, type on the computer. Blah, 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 blah. Why? Right. Just why is Lindsay given such free range? I, I, I don't know. Like, with 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 Holland... Like you could read so much into it. Like he loves playing people against each other, and he wants he wants the people that work under him to have this kind of uh, I, greedy, like I nastiness see. about them. But they don't know wh- how to to write this new guy, and they they don't know what they're telling with Wolf and Hart anymore. No, I suspect, but it'll never get explained. My, the no. only thing that I can think of in my mind to make it not explode is that they <laughs> they were going to go with Lindsay because he's clearly such of a wild card and we know that Wolfram Hart isn't going to do anything prosaic as winning but I think it's safe to say that they, they have some kind of ultimate goal of destruction 
So a guy like Lindsay, just chaos is going to breed more chaos. So that's why we keep him. As opposed to Lila, who treats the job like a job. A job. And she treats it like it's, she's just a lawyer who goes about her business. And that, but, and, you know, they do have the nice moment where Lindsay goes like, listen, she, she works her butt off and oh, we get yeah. little but hints of that. that. He does kind of throw her under the bus because she, well, the way she works her butt off is he reveals that she has dirt on all of you. So I actually don't think she has dirt on all of does you. Uh, like I know, I, I I think he had that dirt on them. Oh, does he? Okay, that's why then, he knows then, all. Then the maybe I feel better about he, it. He's trying. He's trying to to save her, basically, because okay. her she has. I think she has nothing, and that's why she's going to the extreme of going. I'm going to pull out a gun. You can't kill me. Okay, and that's why he he instantly like that grabs her hand. Said, okay, right. Yeah. Uh, so, I thought so that's it, what she it, was doing, working overtime. That she was getting all the dirt that he mentioned. Yeah. And but and he would I, I she might have the dirt like he's been like watching her which is really creepy like there's that really creepy scene where he's like lingeringly watching her but it does flash to the gun which is important but the Chekhov's gun that never comes to fruition really because he just right. kills the bodyguard's gun but there is something like she he could like she could have the information and him know about it but I I think he has the information and is just trying to protect her. But at the same time, he's kind of just giving her the job where she's going to end up probably in danger like this in the future. But in any case, like it's still a good moment, even though it no, like, it's not a good moment. It's a ter- it, it is a terrible it, illogical scene. But he acts it, well. He acts well, and I do like him not throwing Lila under the bus. But if he doesn't throw Lila under the bus, I, if he doesn't, I, he might be. I don't. Whatever. It, it's like a like they've done a lot. It's not as clear cut with Lindsay. It's just they, they haven't told like there's not like a satisfying arc with the character. Like the fact that he's gone, I, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm kind of like yay because oh well, yay. obviously I'm overjoyed. <laughs> but but there's no, there's no satis there's no satisfaction there. Like the the most satisfying thing is. Angel putting a cop sucks uh, yes. sign it's on the back. It's telling that's how we leave the episode, not on Lindsay's actually pretty heartfelt advice to Angel to not play their game. Right. Like, the that's moment we leave on is Angel putting a basically kick me sign on it, Lindsay. <laughs> and just the, his stupid little <laughs> grin. Is, oh, God, I love <laughs> He's so happy he's with so himself. so proud of himself. <laughs> oh. He is. I love when he's a dork. <laughs> so much. Okay. Yeah, Penny Angel is great. Are, are you ready to move on to feedback? I'm because yes. I mean, please, just some. I here's my call. I want to hear from someone who actually likes Lindsay, and I want to hear from someone who can explain in any way that final scene because I think it's terribly written and ill-conceived. Like the whole thing, the whole right. evil hand. And you just have to promise that you. Don't shoot anyone down that's going to explain. No, I will, I will not shoot anyone. If you can legitimately <laughs> explain to me why <laughs> that happened, then we're we're cool. Like, I suspect I don't you won't. That... <laughs> I mean... I, yeah, I don't know how, what the, the general fan consensus is on Lindsay. Because it's not the same, like... There is a general fan oh, consensus yeah. on, on Kate. Yes. Like, There's like... That, that, you can't throw... A rock in the fandom without finding someone who hates Kate or has a problem with Kate. But I, I really don't know if there is anyone that. Okay, I will tell you this: that I was looking on the critically touched, which is a guy who did like all Buffy and Angel, his website, and the comment section for this episode was like overwhelming with love for Lindsay. Like I, I love Lindsay so much more than Lila. I'm so sad to see him go. So those people exist. Whether so they're listening actually, to us, debatable, because we haven't been glowing about <laughs> Lindsay. Well, no, we, we 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 literally built the, the Christian Kane hate train. I mean, all Which aboard. Which I feel a little bit guilty about. But yeah, again, me too. He deserves it. 
I mean, I don't know if he deserves it, but we've we've been really unforgiving, and we even had like we played his his music video song. Okay, again, uh, <laughs> again though, like we just presented that as evidence. I don't think we came out favorably about it, but he put it out there and was clearly very proud of it, and it did well for him. Like, if you like country music, there's nothing wrong with that music video. When you watch the music con- video in this episode, when you watch it in the context of knowing who Lindsay McDonald is, then it becomes funny. So we we need the spinoff. No, we don't. Okay, let's just move on. The spinoff of with Kate as no, the cop don't need a in order with the country music star Lindsay. No, we don't. Okay, just, I'm talking. just gonna. You can keep talking. I'm gonna read Kenneth's comment now. All right. All right. <clears throat> So Caleb said, nobody demanded it, but once upon a time, I felt differently than William Derrick. Once I was a fan and was sorry to see him go. So since nobody else is going to do it, I proudly, well, maybe not proudly, maybe grudgingly presented defense of Lindsay McDonald. Lindsay is smug, arrogant, obsessive, and of course, he has that face, but at times, he shows real glimpses of humanity. He strikes me as a man out of his depths a rural guy with too much room from where he came from. So he hit the big city and did his best. I get the feeling he always wanted to be the country megastar that Christian Kane is, but he was too good of a weasel not to use his real gifts. Dramatic hand acting. And who hasn't turned to evil when their dream, singing dream dies? And dead hand, someone finally lends Lindsay a hand. In all seriousness, though, he can actually sing, or at least he could back then. Like I said, this is this is a man and an actor in the wrong role and place. It was time for him to move on, and for the show too as well. Bye, Kate. Bye, Lindsay. And they found a decent way to do it both times. Better than either character deserved. I wish I could talk to me for ten years ago that was a genuine Lindsay fan. He could have written this far better than I can. Christian Kane did... Really sent a lovely key when Leon Nemour had passed away. He gets points for that, and he gave it a 62 out of 100. So Cam tries, but he doesn't seem to really commit to it. Yeah, he, he, he tries to dig a little deep and then kind of backpedals. But that still that being said... I don't... I, don't, I mean, I guess he does I, show glimpses of humanity. Like, but there's also I, times where he doesn't. But there's also times that he tries when to show... When it's convenient, he shows humanity right. for the episode. Well, and, and there's times that he shows humanity where it doesn't come across... Uh, like, I have no emotion towards it. Like, when he has to pull the plug on, on mailroom uh, yeah, Brad... We worked, in, we worked in the mailroom together. Okay. I don't know who this guy is. Exactly. And I, I don't care about you, Lindsay. <laughs> what was You have a hand. <laughs> You took this guy's hand. We're sorry for you because you have to kill this guy. No, I, uh, yeah, there's just something really bad about it. And oh god, yes, the hand acting. Yes, the hand. The the you got to widespread. You got to widespread your fingers and look at it at a distance, <laughs> and then jab it with a letter of the letter opener. It's actually not really related. I do love that in the opening shot that um, his alarm clock changes drastically in between shots. <laughs> when he first looks at it, it's a completely different and a completely different color than the one where we actually see his like stump turn it off. <laughs> and then it stays the one that the stump turns off for the rest of the episode. But in the very beginning shot of his alarm clock, it is not even close to looking like it does in the rest of the episode. So so they really try and give Christian Kane a nice send-off. I mean, they gave him his music video. They gave him the over-the-top I quit. And they gave him that, that kind of heartfelt scene with Angel, even though like none of them are, are budging. They have so much in common. Like... It's like, just kiss already. But <laughs> they have so much sexual attention, they really do. It's my lean, it's my lean. <laughs> and then, I do like the, the guy that's being choked. Senses, there's something going on. <laughs> I'll just step outside. Like, I'll let you guys we'll put on some food lighting, put on some berry weight, and then you can sort this out. I mean, that's not what he says he's really talking about, they're arguing. 
But, I mean, let's just admit it that there's sexual tension. <laughs> there's more sexual tension between Lila and Lindsay than there ever was with Angel and Kate. <laughs> that, you mean Angel and Lindsay. You said Lila and Lindsay. Oh, I said Lila. I mean, Lindsay okay. does have sexual Angel attention with almost everyone <laughs> in a creepy way. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, so, uh, next up we have Alicia's comment, and she says, uh, the good. Lindsay playing the guitar wasn't bad. I liked Lindsay singing here better than that music video he did. Favorite scenes. You could see your reflection in that glass. Well, I couldn't, the whole vampire situation, but normal person. Want a sniff? How about I, I just believe you? I love you, Angel. Smiles. When Angel gets Cordelia lunch, them all reacting to even the thought of Angel singing. I was thinking of Stairway to Heaven. Don't even joke about that. You're really great, gross, you know that? Other. I'm all for a shirtless guy, but even shirtless Lindsay didn't make me like him any better. <laughs> okay. I, had, <laughs> I had no reaction to sad music Lindsay, longing looks at his guitar, but I did feel bad when Cordelia had the vision and that guy stabbed himself in the eye with a knife. Derek must be so happy Lindsay is singing some country. The spare body parts room was creepy. Lindsay doesn't look good in a, a leather motorcycle jacket. Lindsay's Oklahoma truck is back. Actually, I'm happy and sad Lindsay is gone. Happy I wouldn't have to see Lindsay's asshole face and creepy plastic hand. And sad because I won't be able to make fun of him anymore. So thank you, Alicia. Actually, when... Okay, so when he first started, they, I actually did get kind of inordinately excited because it was happening. And then it went on with the Cordelia shots, and then it just... Whoosh. Right, like, the, it was going to be enjoyable, but then they just had to keep panning to her face of wonderment, and just... <sighs> her her swooning. She, it, she's visibly he, she was swooning. <laughs> she was Someone acting. give her a fainting couch. She was acting like the reaction shots of the judges when Susan Boyle gets up on Britain Scott Talon and starts singing. Like, she has the <laughs> same face as Simon Cowell at that moment. She's like, oh my god. She's got the vapors. <laughs> I'm getting clumped. Uh, uh, okay. Um, is there anything else no, that you want I, to pull like, out of that? If we want to talk, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just so done with him. Like he's gone, and I can't even like muster up happiness about that. Derek can't even. I, I'm like I can't even like right now. Like I need a pumpkin spice latte right now because I like can't even like now, no. no. <laughs> no. Uh I really uh, do the podcast at, like at this point <laughs> for the rest of us. As Lumpy Space Princess? <laughs> yeah, like I'm not. Oh, my glob. Uh, I, I really like the uh, the angel jokes about the singing. Like, their reaction. is It was a funny joke. And I, I liked the... I was thinking about singing Stairway to Heaven. And just the, how serious uh, Wesley is. Don't even joke about that. Well, I really like their reactions. So they're like, there has to be another way. Oh, as, God. As angels, just like, so offended. Come on, guys. I really did like the when Angel's live when I was a boss. No one asked, no one questioned me about my singing, <laughs> singing or how I figured stuff out. You're half right. <laughs> okay. So next up we got Joseph who said, Well, goodbye, Lindsay. The evil hand scene is awesome, but you won't be missed. Looking back, you can see the bones of the character. I guess we're supposed to think that Lindsay was the smartest guy in the room and the most motivated and then empathized with his struggle with Wolf and Heart, but I never bought it. There were too many times where he was just whiny or pathetic that I couldn't get interested enough to hate him. Two, does Angel still have that bag of money because he keeps leaving his throwing axes and exploding buildings, he's going to need it. The cold oven was very effective. Even on we watched, I jumped, and I could really understand how it hurt Cordy to experience that stuff more viscerally. No pun intended. On the other hand, it feels like they are fridging Cordy in slow motion. Wesley and Gunn get to be funny and smart and tough, and Cordy's primary job is to be in danger so the men folks have someone to save. So thank you, Joseph. I think it's interesting that he 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 viewed it that way. I mean, maybe it's just because I had like the opposite reaction. The fact that 
Angel has to to go up to her and go, hey, we need help. I think in this episode, I would dis- I mean, I have seen it in other episodes where they have not really. Do- I mean, they didn't do a whole lot with Cordelia this season. To be honest, sure. they didn't. I sure. think in this one, just because she's in pain doesn't necessarily because she so doesn't want to be seen as a victim. I don't think it makes her a victim, but I would say that they have not used her correctly the majority of the season. I, I would agree with that. Uh, something and it was something I was impressed with, or something that hit me, even though we got so little of it in this episode of of Cordelia, like her just being in pain could be really manipulative, mm-hmm. and. I, I hate that feeling of being manipulated. Like, I, in, like a, a really easy go-to thing in TV or movies that they can do is, is like, showing an animal get hurt. Uh, like, it's just... It's, it's, of an angel fly away. You mean that commercial right, like, that goes on exactly, for a complete you know, commercial break? It'll instantly drum up no. an emotional reaction, right? Yeah, killing or, the dog. Or good. That's why there's right. an, that's why there's an episode. Does the dog die? I mean, not an episode. A website. Does the dog die? Where you can look up in a movie. Does the dog die? So and it's, it's a very helpful. It, it could like it could have come across really cheap in this episode, but I, I I really found it actually really effective and made. You know, it was it was sympathetic. Yeah. Like I, it did drum up drum up sympathy for Cordelia. I mean, do I think they've used Cordelia well this year? No. Do I think this episode did? Yes. Right. And, and it's sad because we we only have what four episodes left. Uh, you know, I thought they had some some early success with her, uh, and then they and, and but they kind of lost focus with the uh, whole really, game. Yeah, in, they in lost general. focus with everyone who was an angel, and I would say. Angel and Wolfram Hart got the most to do this season. Right. And then everyone else who wasn't... Everyone else who was on the side of good and did not. Like, if you so, weren't evil or you weren't Angel, and Angel kind one of did the same anyway. thing. Yeah. So, you didn't get much to do this season. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, this episode kind of gave me a little hope for the future. Like, they they can obviously like these characters can still obviously have stories that resonate with me if I can actually feel something for Cordelia and how little we got of her in this episode. And I would say that I don't think they should have had much more of. I well, I think when we were doing, I think there's some episodes where they definitely could have focused on them more. But I think it's important that the majority of the focus was on Angel's journey. This season. Like, I don't think yeah. it's a terrible thing that they didn't get as much to do. Because I think the Angel stuff and the Wolf and Heart stuff was important. There's a way to balance it that they could have done it better, but I still... I wouldn't trade... I wouldn't exactly say I would cut out anything that we did see in favor of more. Besides maybe some of the case of the Week stuff. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm definitely with you. There was, like, like a couple like, cases... Like, when... When the thing was that we saw at the beginning of Angel Investiga- the new Angel Investigations doing something and the end of it, but none of the middle stuff, that's a problem they needed to fix. But like overall, I don't wouldn't change the structure necessarily. Right, and there's something about on rewatch that like I, I definitely got a lot more out of the Angel storyline. Mm-hmm. So okay, okay. So next up, we have something on disharmony from. Chris Hart who said, I really like this. Apart from the pyramid scheme and the team trying to go up against 100 vamps, and oh yeah, Harmony getting a jail, out of jail free card, it was enjoyable. It was nice to see the team back together, the different interactions between each character and how they have each different relationships to each other has shown growth for all of them. Nice to see all faces, Harmony and Will. I find it funny that we've now had two times in the Angel series that Cordy has rung Willow. Geez, who knew they were friends? I get the computer hacking combo, but this weird. My favorite part by far 
with Angel buying QWERTY clothes at the end. What a lovely smile he has. Kind of sucks that we hardly ever get to see his smile. And QWERTY, the joy of something as shallow as clothes to bring her back to Angel, and Angel knowing that's what would do it, well, it cracked me up in hysterics. Thank you, Kressler. The Willow thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... I, yeah. I mean, yeah. it has occurred to me. It's weird. But uh, it's also occurred to me that Willow seems the most easy to switch, like, to go in between. And I'm not sure if that's just in my head, because Willow, probably at this point, was dating Wesley, and now she is married to him in real life. I uh, Well, maybe. Maybe it was the... Mm-hmm. But, but... Well, even thinking of our... But, like, she's not going to call Xander. Right. And it's not like she's going to ring up Buffy. Buffy, right? <laughs> because Buffy is a star, and that's, like, she's not going to show up in a t- phone conversation. So I, Willow just like from process of elimination, and we saw her interact with Oz in season one, and how awkward that was. Where she literally was like, "It's Oz, it's Oz, it's Oz. <laughs> yeah, look at Oz." And then he's like, "We done? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're good." <laughs> like, well, I, it, of the interaction she could have, this seems like the least awkward. <laughs> Yeah, and even though they, like, it's weird because they were never, they were never even kind of, like, close at all. Right. But also in this phone conversation, Willow seems to have a pretty similar reaction to Cordelia that she always did, like, when Cordelia is embarrassed, when Cordelia finds out that Harmony's a vampire, not a lesbian, and she's embarrassed, Willow rolls her eyes, like... Cordelia hasn't changed at all. Right. And, and yeah, and her whole, like, the, the, the performance that Willow gives, like, is, is very telling and indicating of that, of her perception of Cordelia. Yeah, it's Cordelia. clear that she, she doesn't know that Cordelia has changed, and she... It's not like she's, yeah, it's... It, it's not like they're friends. It's right. that she, she's probably... Like, they talk. It's like It just seems like Willow will take a phone conversation from anyone because she's Willow and she's nice. And they need that. They need to talk. There needs to be some conversation in between the two teams. Right. But it, it, it's not like... I, it's, I don't think you assume that Willow is I don't think they're calling to check up on each other. Right. Like, I know... Obviously, they're not because Cordelia doesn't know Willow's a lesbian, which, you know... If we're having weekly checkups, I think Willow, you know, I'm gay now. <laughs> What's new with you? Uh, <laughs> foot and mouth. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, anything else from Chris, Chris Hart's comment? Nope. <laughs> not not that we haven't already talked about. Okay. So, favorite moment scores? Yep. So, you wanted me to go first? Uh, sure. Okay, so I actually, for a favorite moment, I went with when Cordelia is alone. When Cordelia, Cordelia thinks she's alone and she's all she's doing is crying. Because it really hit me how, and she did such a good job of portraying that she's trying to hide this pain. And she doesn't want to be seen as weak, but when she's alone, all she can do is cry. And then it's and then it, it's also cut with Wesley and a gun being concerned about her. And then once they come in, she immediately starts acting like Cordelia, like she's right. always annoyed with them because they Puts think on she's the- going crazy because she's talking <laughs> to herself, but she's talking to Angel. But she, as soon as they're as soon as she knows she's not alone, she's acting like Cordelia again. Yeah, she puts on to. that persona. Mm-hmm. For, for me, I, I went with an earlier scene, but a kind of a similar kind of uh, feeling that you get from it. Uh, when when Angel goes to try and get more information and kind of forces her to kind of relive the the the, the eye stabbing scene, mm-hmm. uh, it was it's it's really I found it really emotional, especially with 
you know, we need uh, Angel saying we need help, and then Cordelia, you know, finally like breaking down towards the end of it, saying, you know, I just keep seeing it and I can't get rid of it, and and there was just something really just kind of heartbreaking about it. And I like the, what I like about that scene is that it's Cordelia's visions are because the visions in recent things have been just like here's a location, go to it. Whereas she, there's actually, she can use the visions to really get help and like information. Like if she really, if she can, there's a purpose to them besides like a plot device to go here. Like right. If she, there, she can really use them even if it's painful. I like how they like do detective work that she figures things out. It's a nice moment. Yeah, it's an, I, not not just be like this person in pain that she's actually she kind of is a turning point in the case sort of right like don't don't just make her like one of Giles's books that they randomly flip to page 23 and find the Wesley's answer Wesley's books now yes uh like the fact like the fact that they have Angel Wesley and Gunn all go do things and kind of fail and then have to to rely on, on Cordelia and that she actually gets to do something. It's not just, Oh, I had it and it's on West seventh or, or, you know, whatever the random locations they always say, you know, the fact that she actually had to, she got to really contribute to the case. I thought it was really effective. And she hasn't done that in a while. Okay. Yeah, sure. So scores. Scores. Hmm. Should I'm going to go first. Yeah, you, you should. <laughs> okay. So Cordelia stuff, Really effective. Some of the Lindsay Angel interactions kind of enjoyable. Most of the Lindsay story kind of boring. Uh, kind of boring is generous. Yeah. So I'm I'm giving it a very generous score. I did not have a visceral hatred for it, and I enjoyed some moments. Good for you. But definitely lots of flaws. So I'm giving it a sixty out of a hundred. Good for you. Um. So. Again, I feel like I've explained why. <laughs> I don't like this. And I really don't. And I really, really don't. <laughs> so, I gave it a 49. <laughs> and, you know, that's negative, and it is. But, you know, if we're looking at, like, a letter score, that's really like a D. And I feel, you know, that's appropriate because the Lindsay story for me is a big, fat F in just every way. It fails towards the end. And the Cordelia sure. stuff is good. And if you do like an F with a, like, B or C or whatever, you can get a D. Maybe not. Whatever. I really hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and just, like, it doesn't deserve anything. I thought about going into the fifth. Really, here's how it happened. You want to go through my thought process. I had in the 50s, and then I sat down to write the review, and I'm like, (laughs) I like the Cordelia stuff, and then I got to the bad, and the Lindsay thing just ballooned and ballooned and ballooned, and I got more and more angry about it until I decided, no, no, I'm going down. Just snowball going downhill. (laughs) Just the more I think about the Lindsay stuff, the less sense it makes to me, and the lower my score went. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's wrap up since we don't want to lower it any further. I mean, it, it really there was a moment there when this almost got like dipping towards the thirty line. Wow, wow. Not really, <laughs> but if I could grade the amount of sense. The Wolf. I mean, Wolfram and Hart just like a zero for their plan this week because there wasn't one. Yeah, they just seem really weak and zero sense. And why are they giving him a hand? And yeah, it makes why are they giving him no a hand? Sense. Why are they giving him a promotion? Why haven't they shot him yet? They're gonna send a blind assassin after him. You just wait. <laughs> yeah, but that's, all right. But I won't get the satisfaction of watching him die. <laughs> Like, because he's off the show now, so like, wow, how will I get the gratification from seeing him whiny, eh, and then just just dying, just like blood spurt. Oh, that was dark, but still. <laughs> oh, God. 
<laughs> so there's something really uh, fitting about Angel's conversation with Lindsay at the end of the episode where it's like, you know, you, you, don't, you didn't even have me anymore, you know, something to focus that rage. And we're not going to have Lindsay around to, to focus that rage anymore. And there's going to be something kind of sad about that. I'm sure I'll find something to get angry about. <laughs> Don't worry. Even All though right. we've got rid of Kate and Lindsay, I'll sure I'll find another character to hate. And poor man's own, he's in a he's in hot contention right now. <laughs> <laughs> If you'd like to leave us some feedback, you can do so by commenting on the post at theangelrewatch.wordpress.com. Or you can send an email to angelrewatch at gmail.com. You can call our voicemail number at 206-203-3276. Or you can go to the Tumblr, which is angelrewatch.tumblr.com to see all the reviews archive there and the gifts of what our episode we're watching. We're available on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher. While you're there, leave us a review. It really helps promote the show. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at NerdGuyWilliam. And you can follow me on Twitter and Tumblr, at the Comforador. And next time, we'll be reviewing Belonging, where Angel and his crew must find a way to kill a bloodthirsty demon who has arrived in town from another dimension.